Oh, my stars, what a day. You have new messages. Steve, how's it going? It's Mr. Burger. It's time for another episode of Art 101. Check it out, buddy. Art, 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 art 101 with Mr. Burger. <laughs> Hello again, scholars, and welcome back to another episode of Art 101 with me, Mr. Berger. I'm a professional artist and educator attempting to bring you the best in art historical content. If you like this video, others in the series, please make sure you like, share, subscribe, or interact in any way, shape, or form with these videos, and I appreciate it greatly, and thank you for that. You're so funny. <laughs> so in this episode, what I'd like to do is dive a little bit deeper into one of the four types of printing that there are. There are, again, four types of printing, and one of those four is stenciling. And what I'd like to do is get a little bit deeper into the idea and some of those little uh, tidbits uh, of basic knowledge about using stenciling as a form of print. In its simplest terms, a stencil is a sheet with a design cut out of it. Paint that is on top or sprayed over the sheet transfers the design to the picture plane. Stencils are a quick way to make lettering or repeated designs on a wall. Stencils are a favored method of creation by street artists who communicate through pictorial messages because they permit a fast fabrication without the need of redrawing it each time. One of these artists is Ken McCarthy, a Seattle-based artist who also uses the alias Soul. Her urban Buddha shows many repeated patterns in the background that she has achieved with stencils by using blue and green paint. The drawback to using stencils is shading is not real possible, only positive and negative spaces. She has overcome this difficulty by adding many colors and brush strokes, as well as paint, drips, and splatters. You're 1,000% right, yeah! Screen printing is a refinement of the technique of stenciling. Early in the last century, stencil techniques were improved by adhering a stencil to a screen made of a silk fabric stretched across a frame. With a rubber squeegee, ink can then be pushed through the fabric onto an open area. Screen printing is well suited for the production of images with areas of uniform color. Each separate color requires a different screen, but registering the print is relatively simple. Screen printing thus lends itself to poster production. Many social movements have allied themselves with silk screen artists that have spread the word about their causes. For example, Esther Hernandez made hundreds of posters that asserted Chicano identity and denounced the working conditions of many Mexican American laborers. Her screen print, Sun Mad, is both an excellent example of screen art and a memorable protest against the usage of pesticides. The latest development of screen printing is a photographic stencil or photo screen achieved by attaching light sensitive gelatin onto the screen fabric. An example of this is from the 1986 series Cowboys and Indians where Andy Warhol creates a series of 250 screen prints like this example John Wayne. I got no interest in you today. Stand clear and you won't get hurt. <laughs> The photo comes from a movie still for the movie The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance. A series of screens would have been fabricated to create the various colors and layering that we see in this artwork. Now, the photo itself was used without the permission of John Wayne or the movie production or whatever, so this was a problem that had to be resolved. So the solution was that the Andy Warhol Foundation gifted one of these prints, as well as seven others, to the John Wayne family in exchange for them to be able to have the rights. The John Wayne work was sold at auction in 2011 for $17,675. Digital technologies have altered printmaking at a basic level by eliminating the tangible plate. Graphic design encompasses a wide range of design work, especially in the world of print media. Album art is a branch of print media that most of us can identify with. 
The Beatles Abbey Road from 1969 or Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon 1973 or the Led Zeppelin self-titled album from 1969. Now for me, one of the albums that stands out is the In Utero album, which was the third and final studio album that was released by my favorite band Nirvana in 1993. The art director for the project was Robert Fisher, who had designed all of Nirvana's releases for DGC. Most of the ideas for the artwork of the album and the related singles came from the frontman of the group, Kurt Cobain, which Cobain himself described as sex and women and in utero and vaginas and birth and death. The front cover of the album is an image of a anatomical teaching aid a mannequin with transparent skin. They then have these angel wings that are superimposed onto this mannequin. The collage used on the back of the album had been set up on the floor of Cobain's living room and was then photographed after an unexpected call from Cobain. According to the photographer, Charles Peterson, one Sunday afternoon, Kurt calls me up and he's like, hey, I want you to take that picture now. I rummaged for whatever film I had in the fridge and went over. So basically Cobain's got the whole thing laid out on the floor where he has to shoot from the top down to capture the image that is then taken back and worked on digitally with song titles and symbologies from the Woman's Dictionary of Symbols and Sacred Objects book placed around the outside edges. No, gotta blame it, dang woman! I love that story. <laughs> Thanks for watching.